Hi everyone, welcome back. I am back. I am really happy to be filming today. I haven't filmed a sit down video in about a week and a half, probably close to two weeks now. I figured today we would do a full face of nothing new. I haven't done one of these in a little while and I thought I would kind of share where I've been. Some of you know that I just recently had a surgery, a laparoscopy done, and um, that's why I've been MIA for a little bit, but I figured I could chat about it now that I've had it done, and I know a lot of you want to know a bit of an update because I've been getting so many messages here and comments and also on my Instagram, so I wanted to update you, and I figured we could just do a get ready with me and use some older products as well. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. If you are new here, my name is Blair. I do beauty and makeup content here on YouTube. I hope you'll subscribe and stick around and let's get started. All right, I pulled out a bunch of makeup here. Some of it I just pulled from my everyday makeup container that I have here and then I pulled out a few other things, but these are not new launches or anything. I'm just gonna do, I think a very, basic Blair everyday kind of minimal look. I don't know. I just pulled out things I was in the mood to use. So let's get started with uh, some Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury. And I'll just kind of share what's been going on for the past week and a half. I, a lot of you already know, I shared in a video a few weeks ago I've been talking about this for more than a few weeks, I guess, but I uh, have been having some ongoing stomach issues that I haven't been able to figure out, and um, I've done all kinds of things to try to figure out what's going on, and the most recent thing is a laparoscopy, so I know a lot of you know this, so I'm sorry if this is like repeat information, but basically... I had a laparoscopy done a week from Tuesday, this past Tuesday, so it's Thursday the 14th as I'm filming it, so I had this done on the 5th. So I'm a little over a week out from having this done, and it was to see if I have endometriosis. Kind of a long story, I will link the video where I kind of talk more in depth about the issues that I've been having and how long I've been having it, all that. I will link it above and then I'll link it in the description box also, but basically I have had unexplained stomach issues that I've never been able to figure out. It's been going on for years since I was like 12, 13 years old and I've done all these things trying to figure out what it is. I've had ultrasound, CT scan, I've been to many gastroenterologists about it. I've had endoscopies done before, um, but recently a few or one of the doctors that I went to asked me if I had ever been or if I had ever considered that I might have endometriosis, which I have. I've been kind of wondering that for a long time because I have these stomach issues that kind of come and go. Sometimes they're worse, sometimes they're not as bad, and they just kind of hang around. But basically what I've noticed is that a lot of the times they really seem to, or it seems to flare up before I start my period. So that's kind of the first thing years ago that kind of made me wonder, okay, that's kind of strange. That it seems to kind of coincide with where I'm at in my cycle. So. Basically, I've been wondering for years if I have endometriosis. So finally, I had a laparoscopy done and I do, in fact, have endometriosis. I basically went to see a bunch of different doctors about it, a bunch of different OBGYNs kind of asked their opinion on it and ended up finding, or my husband did actually, end up finding a specialist that specializes in laparoscopy and minimally invasive surgeries basically and so that's kind of the background of what I had done. I just used this product. I pulled this out for my last everyday makeup drawer video and this I this is one of the best drugstore products 
ever. And there for a while, you would hear people talk about this here and there, but it's the Milani Supercharged Under Eye Eye Tint. And this is the shade Peach. This is so nice. It's literally, it's like an eye cream and a corrector, like all in one. It's super thin and hydrating, but it has that really peachy pink hue to it. It works really well. So just want to throw that out there. This is highly underrated in my opinion. All right, I'm actually going to use um, my Merit Minimalist Stick today for a foundation. So yeah, so I had the laparoscopy done and a lot of you uh, messaged me beforehand and you told me that you'd had one done and I've talked to a few people that have had this done before and honestly I didn't really know what to expect with it because I've never had a surgery like that. I've been put to sleep before but not like that and I've never had a surgery where I had like an incision. So I just didn't really know what to expect with it really but I was really nervous um, and I, I mean I have to say laparoscopies I guess in general are considered minimally invasive and I, I guess that's because of the size of the incision that you get, but I gotta say, I don't know how minimally invasive I think that it is. I didn't really know what to expect, but I also kind of thought in my head, okay, after I have this done in like 24 hours, 48 hours, I'm gonna be good and right back to normal and, um, you know, just go on with life filming my videos and just doing what I normally do, and that just was not the case. It kind of knocked me off my feet, to be honest, much more than I thought that it would have. But basically, I went, I had this done really early in the morning. I had to be there at like 5.30 in the morning. And beforehand, I couldn't have any food the day before. I could only have liquids. I had to do a bowel prep, which was just super fun. Um... Yeah, that there was a lot. It was just a lot, a lot at once. And I have to say, I'm definitely not a huge fan of it. I'm not wanting to do that again anytime in the near future. Yeah, it was just, it was more annoying than I thought it was going to be. Like annoying in the sense that it really just kind of disrupted my whole routine of life. But I did at least get it done. And it's behind me now, which I'm really really happy about. So if you've never had a laparoscopy done before, I'm still learning a lot about them, but um, to my knowledge, an OBGYN can do them if you, if they suspect that you have endometriosis, um, like just your normal OBGYN. I ended up going to somebody that specializes in that, which I would highly recommend because I had a really good experience with the doctor that I went with. But I don't know, it was just kind of, it was just more, it affected me more than I thought it was going to. Because you hear, you know, even the practice that I go to is called like minimally invasive, I think it's gynecological procedures or something like that. And I mean, I guess it could kind of be considered minimally invasive, but you're still essentially being cut in the abdomen multiple times. So for me, I had uh, three incisions. I'm not sure if everybody who has a laparoscopy has three incisions. I'm thinking they don't, but I don't know. I had three and they were kind of like in my belly button and then one on each side. And I knew, you know, obviously I'm having a surgery. I'm going to get, I'm going to have incisions. I knew that going in, but then I don't know. You don't realize how much that's going to affect your ability to stand up, sit down, wash your hair. Like you need this area to do so many things, you know? And I, I know that now and I know that anyway, but it's just kind of one of those things. You don't realize how much you need that your abdominal muscles and your core until you have something like that done and you don't have, you can't really use them. So I will never again take for granted my abdominal muscles or just my abdomen in general because that was really tough. You know, it's just when you never had something like this done, you just, 
I don't know. You just, you feel like you kind of know what's going to happen, but you don't really, you know, if you never had it done. So that really surprised me about the whole thing, just how much that was going to limit me in terms of just doing things. Like it's even hard. You don't think about just like laying in bed. You can't, it's hard to like get yourself up, like because you have to kind of use this area. I don't know. It was just, I was surprised by how much it kind of knocked me off my feet basically. But the other thing, and a few of you mentioned this to me and I'd read this before, but I didn't know what, what it meant truly until I had it done. <laughs> and this is kind of TMI. I'm sorry if this, if you don't like TMI things, you probably shouldn't watch this video, but um, the gas pain, you guys. The gas pain is on another level. I read so many times you get gas pain in your shoulders, like in your, like right here. And you think that's a really strange place to get or to have gas pain. And it doesn't sound like that would be that painful, but you guys, that, that was probably the worst part, honestly, of all of it because it's sharp pain, double over kind of sharp pain and you really can't escape it. Like the only thing you can do is take like gas X, which I tried and that didn't really help me that much. Um, I've tried gas X in the past and I, it does not work very well for me. I'm not sure why. So that was probably the worst part of everything was the gas pain because it is, it's not like any gas pain you've ever had before. It's, it's intense. Because if you don't know, when you have a laparoscopy done, they inflate your stomach with carbon dioxide. So afterwards, you just have a ton of excess air. And it doesn't sound like excess air would cause that much, that many problems, but it does. It does, and it's not fun. So that was probably, that was probably the worst part of the whole thing. And um, I, like I said, I read about it, but I just didn't really... I didn't know how it was going to be until now. Now I know. But let me tell you, that is next level to anything you've ever had before. By the way, that was the uh, Merit Cream Bronzer in the shade Clay. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of powder now. I pulled out this NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop powder. And I'll just kind of talk about how it went the day of. So... Like I said earlier, I had to be there really early in the morning. I had to be at the uh, hospital at like 5.30 in the morning. And the day before, like I said, I had to do no food, just liquids. So there was that. Um, and then I had to do the bowel prep with the magnesium. I kind of talked about that if you saw my um, vlog that I put up a few days, or I guess it's been more than a week ago now but i kind of talked about how i had to do a bowel prep before this with the magnesium so i had done that and um, that was interesting so <laughs> i get there the morning of and i'm obviously nervous because i just i don't do well with doctors and things like that i'm really scared of just medical stuff in general, but especially uh, in the last few years, the OBGYN, that, that's kind of just been stressful for me. If anytime I go, I just, I get very like antsy about it. So I was very nervous that day. And um, so they take me back and they're like, okay, I get in the hospital gown and all that. And then there, well, there were several nurses in there. One of the nurses is like, okay, I'm going to start your IV now, which another thing about me is I hate needles. I hate needles. I am trying to get better about it because I've had in the last year, I've been to a lot of different doctors, like I said. So I've had a lot of blood work done in the past year. So I'm trying to kind of conquer that fear that I have, but I, I still don't like it. I definitely improved, but I still just get really nervous about that kind of stuff. So they're like, okay, we're going to go ahead and start your IVs. And he was like, oh yeah. And by the way, this uh, surgeon that's doing your laparoscopy, he likes to have two IVs. He likes one in each arm. So of course I'm laying there and I'm like, great. 
I was already like dreading having one and now he's like, oh yeah, actually we're gonna have to do, <laughs> we're gonna have to do two. So I'm like, okay, I'm like sitting there, kind of giving myself a little pep talk. I'm like, okay, you know, it's fine. I can, it's fine. So he starts uh, the IV and he tells me that he's gonna do it on my wrist right here, which I've never had an IV there. I've only ever had an IV right here. So I didn't say anything. I was just like, okay. So he starts with this arm and I don't know if you'll be able to see, but it's, t it's bruised there and there. It's like green and yellow. But anyway, he starts with this one and he gets, he gets it in, but he's like, I still don't remember what he said exactly. Something wasn't right with it. He got the IV in, but then he said it wasn't Something wasn't flush the way it was supposed to be. I don't know. So he's like, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to take this out and we're gonna have to go up here instead. So I'm like, okay, great. So I just thought I got through one of them and now he's gonna do <laughs> he's gonna do another one. So I was like, okay, whatever. So finally he does this one here. That one he does no problem. Then he goes on this side and he wants to do the wrist again, which I don't I don't really know why they choose the wrist over like this area. If you are in the medical field, you probably know. Let me know why. But anyway, so he goes and he does the wrist on this side and it works over here. But anyway, so that's kind of how that went. So at, at this point, I'm, you know, it's early in the morning. I haven't had any food. I'm nervous. I've got two IVs, which I hate needles. Um. So yeah, that's kind of how that went. So that part definitely wasn't fun. I was very excited to have that over with. After that, you know, the anesthesiologist comes in and they explain what they're going to do and you have to sign forms and all of that. So finally I got that done. Then really they came in. I, so I had like three or four nurses come in and um, they took me into the operating room and honestly don't remember much of that at all other than I remember being wheeled in and there were a ton of people in there and I remember thinking, wow, there's so many people in here. I wouldn't have thought there would be that many people in the operating room, but there was and that's about it. That's about all I really remember from it other than when I woke up, I was, I was in significant pain. I mean, I wouldn't say it was anything like crazy, but it was definitely more than I would have thought for sure. And um, also when I woke up, I got like very nauseated too, which I hate feeling nauseated. So that wasn't fun, but that did subside pretty quickly um, after about an hour or so. But yeah, that's kind of how it went. And then I came home and I just, I've really been just sleeping, resting. That's why I haven't been filming really is I just, it kind of threw me for a loop, just mentally, uh, physically, emotionally. It was just, it was just a lot. By the way, the blush that I just used is actually this one from the Patrick Ta Holiday Palette. This is from, this was his first blush palette and this is She's a Doll. So you can get She's a Doll by itself now, but I'm just using the one that I have in this palette. That was the powder that I just used and I'm gonna do a little bit of the cream now. So yeah, that's kind of how it went. Um, and then yeah, I'm just trying to be, trying to just kind of recover from that. I'm glad it's over with. It was worth it. I'm glad that I now know that I do have it. Um, even though obviously, you know, I, w I don't want to have endometriosis, but at the same time, I'm glad to now know at least that that, that is a thing. I'm not just like making these things up in my head. So anyway, that's how it went. And so they did, they removed what they found of it and they did do like a biopsy, which that's I think that's how they do it primarily everywhere, but I know in the United States, I think typically that's kind of how you get an official diagnosis for endometriosis is they remove the tissue and biopsy it and see 
what comes back and that's what happened for me. Um, and I did yesterday, I had my like post-op appointment with the doctor just to kind of go over how I was feeling and the biopsy results and all that. But basically he said that yes, I do have it, but I have a very mild case of it. So it's like stage one, I guess. I think there's four different stages of endometriosis and mine is stage one. It's very mild, but it was there. And they removed, you know, what they saw. So they also, another thing, they also found, which this is really interesting to me. Let me know if you know anything about this, but they also found that I had three fibroids and those fibroids did not show up on an ultrasound that I did. I had a vaginal ultrasound done like two months ago, two and a half months ago. And they said they did not see anything on the ultrasound. Now this was not the doctor that did the surgery. This was like my normal OBGYN. But I was kind of surprised by that. I, was, I wasn't surprised that I had them because I, I know fibroids are pretty common. But I was surprised that it did not show up on that ultrasound. So I don't know. Let me know. But I did also have that and they removed those or like zapped them off somehow. I don't know. But um, yeah, that's what they found. So it was minimal endometriosis or like stage one endometriosis. And it was in, I don't really know a lot about it, but I know that where he said he found mine was in the cul-de-sac area. So I guess on the anterior cul-de-sac and the posterior cul-de-sac, it was like on both. Yeah, so mine was the uh, posterior and anterior cul-de-sac, uh, wherever that is. Uh, he explained what, where exactly that is, but now I don't. You know, in medicine, they use all these words that you don't really understand or know, but I know that that's where he found it. And the other weird thing about, there are a lot of weird things to me about endometriosis, but one of them is definitely that, I guess, your degree of endo does not really indicate the symptoms that you have. So basically, like he said, there are people that I see that have a ton of endometriosis and they have no symptoms. In fact, usually they don't even know that they have endometriosis until they, they're having an operation for some other reason and they discover that they have it. Um, but then there are also people that have a very minimal amount of it, but they have a lot of issues from it. So mine is, like I said, in considered stage one, it's very minimal, but I'm hoping that maybe what they did is going to help the issues that I've been having because I, like I said, I'll link the video where I talk about it, like the whole thing. But basically I get random stomach, like gnawing pain almost. And it starts kind of around my belly button area. And then lately it's kind of been more over on the left side. And then in the last few months it, it's, also been a little bit of pelvic pain as well. So that's kind of what made me really start looking into what it was. But you know, my pain is not always in the pelvic area, which I don't know, you know, he, he made sure to look around my belly button, which is where I've had the pain the longest uh, for years. I mean, it's been almost 20 years. I've had this kind of on and off. And he said that he didn't see anything there. He looked all around, which I'm really, really happy about, looked all in that area and did not see any sign of anything. So he also explained to me yesterday when I went to see him that, you know, just because they, he didn't see anything in that area where my belly button is doesn't mean I don't have like microscopic endometriosis that's there that you can't even see really. But he said, you know, physically things that I could see and remove, I did not see anything in that area. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to help 
with the issues that I have, but I'm hoping so much that maybe that it will, because um, this has just been such an ongoing thing. I feel like I've been trying to figure this out for more than half of my life, what this is that kind of comes on randomly and it just hangs around. It doesn't, sometimes it hangs around longer, but it's just, it's just one of those things that I've had for years and I've never known what causes this stomach pain. I do feel good about just knowing in general that yeah, I do have it. I'm not crazy. I'm not totally crazy and making all these things up that I've had all these years. Honestly, I probably should have had this done a long time ago just to see, but here we are and I'm a week out and right today actually I feel good. I feel like my normal self, um, which I'm so thankful for and I can tell you, like I said in an earlier clip, don't take your body for granted because that's the one thing I've learned from having this surgery done is your body does a lot for you on a daily basis and you know it's something that you don't really think about until you have something like that done where you are really physically not able to do things like you normally would. So that I have definitely learned in the last week and a half. I know I said I was going to try to post Monday through Friday in December. I am going to try to do that moving forward. I just decided to just give myself the time that I needed to kind of recover from this because, I mean, it is a big deal. I know they say it's minimally invasive, but it's still a surgery. They're still like stabbing you in the stomach a few times, essentially. So, you know, it is a big deal and I just... It's been a little bit more of a struggle than I thought it was going to be. But I did also want to thank all of you um, that have reached out and just asked how I was doing or just sent me a, an encouraging message on Instagram or on here. I really, really appreciate it. That is it for my brows. Uh, I'm just going to use a little bit of brow gel. Um, and the other thing I wanted, a few other things I wanted to say is another thing this whole situation has taught me is that if you have something going on and you get an opinion from a doctor or whoever and you just don't feel right about it, you don't feel good about it, you don't feel like very confident about it, then go get another opinion. Do some research yourself and find somebody else preferably uh, somebody that specializes in a certain area because, and even this, my doctor said this yesterday when I went to see him, is he, was, he said, if someone else had done this laparoscopy on you, like a, just a normal OBGYN that doesn't do it all the time and is not really experienced in finding endometriosis, he said, I think they probably would have looked at you and really quick said, okay, she doesn't there's nothing, there's nothing going on here and, you know, closed me back up and that would have been it. Because he said I did, you know, it, it was not a, a large amount of endo. Like I said, it was small and it was kind of hidden. So you would really have to like look around for it and know what you're looking for when you see things. So I would say that in anything medical, if you, you know, don't have a good feeling about something, listen to your gut and go see somebody else. And if you don't feel good about them, then go see somebody else. And it's not always, it's not the fun thing to do and it's not the easy way to take, but that is something I'm really happy about is that I did not just let the first OBGYN that I talked to about this do this because, you know, like I said, it's a big deal. I know they say it's you know, it's minimally invasive and I know, but you know, if somebody's cutting you open, essentially, you want to make sure you know that they know what they're looking for, why they're doing it. And if something is there, then they will see and they will, they will find it and try to help you, you know? And that's just the one thing that I've really learned from this whole experience. So I'm very grateful for this doctor because he was very calm and just I knew that I could tell that he was very 
I just felt comfortable with him and I think I'm, that's really important especially for me because like I said I'm very I'm just anxious about that kind of stuff I mean nobody likes to have a surgery nobody likes to go to the doctor I don't think but I really don't like it so I'm just grateful that I found this guy and um, that it, it did go well it, it just was it was a bit more difficult than I had anticipated the other thing that I've kind of been struggling with. And I'm sorry, if this video is all over the place, I'm sorry. I'm kind of out of practice with my filming because I've just, I haven't really been doing anything other than watching a lot of YouTube and resting for like the last week and a half. So I feel like I'm a little bit out of practice. So I'm sorry if I'm all over the place in this video, but I just, the other thing I've kind of been struggling with is I've just, it's kind of put me in a bit of a funk mentally. And I think it's, be, or I know it's because, first of all, I've been out of my routine, um, just my daily routine, because I'm a very routine person. I'm somebody that thrives in routine and, you know, just boring everyday, like, routine. That works for me. And that has kind of been getting to me mentally. And then the other thing, Probably the biggest piece of it is that, you know, I've been dealing with these stomach issues for more than half my life. So I kind of didn't know how to go into this surgery because it's kind of like one of those situations where do you want them to find something or do you not want them to find something? Because on one hand, I'm like, okay, I don't want to have endometriosis. I, I don't want, I don't want that. I, I know you can have a family and I won't get all into that too much with it and you know it's not a serious condition like life or death or anything which I'm very very grateful for it's just it's one of those things where I didn't really know how to feel about it going into it I kind of wanted them to find that just so I knew that I wasn't going crazy and that it kind of validated my feelings a little bit but then at the same time I was like no you know I don't want to have endometriosis so I don't know I feel like after the surgery and um you know once of course I saw the biopsy results and they said yeah that's that's endometriosis I've kind of been struggling with that a little bit mentally just because I've been wondering all this time and I finally have an answer now is it the answer that I was really wanting no but um, I also think there's something to be said for knowing something, like not having to wonder anymore. Like there have been so many years, so many times when I thought, I've had that thought over the years, you know, oh, you know, I wonder if you have endometriosis, but it's, it's one of those things. There's no way to know unless you go in there and somebody actually physically looks and it's just a weird thing at 31 to finally know, okay, yeah, I do have it. I don't know. It's just kind of put me in a bit of a funk mentally. So I just kind of wanted to share. And I'm sorry if this is not something that you're interested in. I promise I will get back to like normal content and normal videos very soon. But this, I just kind of wanted to share because I know a lot of you have been along for this. And a lot of you have messaged me wanting to know like how everything was going and I thought it would just be easier if I made a video and kind of told you how it went. I am definitely feeling better today though, for sure. And I want to feel better because I want, I have so many video ideas, you guys. The last week and a half, I, I feel like I've just had so many ideas in my head, things that I want to do. I... I did actually film a declutter two days ago. Um, I just haven't edited yet, edited it yet. So that will be coming. I just don't know uh, if this will go up or that will. I'm assuming this will probably go up first. But I did do a declutter video. I kind of wanted to do another declutter just to really kind of go through everything, just to start the new year off with a fresh start, you know? It's nice to do that. So I did film that, that will be coming, but I have so many video ideas, so many. And I feel like it's unfortunate that this uh, surgery had to 
come around in December, which is not the ideal time in the world of content creation, but you know, like I said, it needed to be done and I'm grateful that I have it behind me and that I at least do now have an answer to what I've been wondering for a long time. So I hope that maybe if you're someone that maybe you don't think you have endometriosis, but you think something else is going on, I would just encourage you to, as annoying as it is and as difficult as it is, to go see different different people try to figure things out, I would encourage you to do it because mentally alone, I think that has been worth it for me, even though it's, you know, obviously not a great outcome. Just knowing that, yes, you do, you do have it, you're not crazy, um, and that could be a reason why you've had these issues all this time, that alone has been worth it for me. So I hope that if I can encourage anyone in any way to do that. I want to do that. I'm going to do a little bit of eyeliner. And one other thing I left out of this whole thing um, in terms of what happened after I had this done. And I'm sorry if this is TMI, but I feel like if you clicked, if you're watching this video at this point, then you're fine with TMI things. But basically, when I scheduled this, surgery. I scheduled it for the 5th of December and I just was not thinking at the time that that was like right before uh, I was supposed to get my period. So my period was supposed to come on the 9th and um, I assumed that having this done would probably throw it off by a few days because you know a lot of times when you when you travel or you're stressed, which I was definitely stressed, um, that will throw off your cycle. And it did not, in fact. It, uh, like, actually it came two days early, which I was shocked by. Because um, they told me after I had it done that I was going to have a little bit of bleeding that was normal, and I did. Um, but then, even after a few days, I was like, oh, I think I, think I started my period, and I did. Um, so, on top of all this, I um, also had my period on top of it, which was super fun. Um, so yeah, that was another thing. It's just been a lot. So that's why I've been MIA. All right, for mascara, this has been my new favorite, you guys. They, I showed this in my vlog that went up, um, but this mascara from Clinique is so good. It is so good. The Hi-Fi Volume, I think is what it's called. I have absolutely fallen in love with this mascara. I just curled my right side and I'm telling you guys this mascara is good. And I feel like it is not getting very much hype. It hasn't been out for that long, but it's it's definitely been out for a few months, but it it is really good. It adds a ton of volume and it also does a really good job of separating the lashes too. I have just really been loving it. But I hope all of you are doing well. I just, I feel like, like I said, I haven't been filming in the last week and a half, two weeks. So I feel like I'm behind. I'm definitely behind on uh, comments and stuff. So I still have to kind of catch up on that. But I hope you guys are doing well. I have so many video ideas, like I said, so many things that I want to film. If you have any videos that you really want to see from me in the near future, comment them below and I'll make sure I go through and read all your suggestions. But I am definitely going to be doing a uh, best of 2023 video, of course. I want to do an updated favorites video. I want to do... Uh, I know a lot of people have been doing this video and I love this to revisit my 2022 favorites and kind of tell you what I think of them now after a year has gone by. I just, I have so many, so many videos and then I still have more decluttering that I want to film too, so that will be coming, but let me know if there's something in particular that you really want to see. Leave it in the comments. 
All right, let's finish up with the lips. I'm gonna use this Makeup by Mario lip liner in the shade Hue. I really love this Patrick Ta blush shade. I know it, it's a lot of blush, but I, I love it personally. She's a doll. I need to, I always kind of forget that I have that shade because it's in the palette, not like an individual one, but it is one of the prettiest pinks ever. Taking a little bit of cool brown from Anastasia and I'm just adding that in the center, kind of like I do with Travis sometimes from Makeup by Mario. I've really been liking adding something a little bit darker just in the center. And then I think I'm gonna use the cream blush again so she's a doll I'm just gonna use a little bit on my lips i think i want to do a little bit of gloss so i'm just gonna do a little bit of this dior maximizer in the shade 38. all right you guys that is it for today's get ready with me full face of nothing new and just a little bit of an update for you but like I said, thank you so much for sticking with me and supporting me. I am hoping this is going to bring some normalcy to how I feel moving forward, I hope. And I'm just, I'm ready to get back into filming and, you know, my normal life. Because like I said, I thrive with normalcy and routine, so... I'm looking forward to that, but thank you so much for watching. I will have all the products linked and listed below. Any, I probably use some things I didn't even tell you what they were, but they will all be listed below. I do use affiliate links that support my channel, so thank you so much if you use them. I am planning to be back as planned Monday through Friday now. Hopefully nothing else gets in the way, but thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and follow me on Instagram at simply.blair and TikTok simply.blair1 and I will see you next time. Remember, simply be you. Bye.